Hi everyone, Cindy Otto here. How are we doing? Um, I'm doing okay today. I'm cold. I don't know why, but I'm really cold. It's rainy and icky outside. We are here with chronic pain, and this month, for the month of month of March, we're looking at I can't and I can. Um, I just want to preface this by saying I am not a I'm not a therapist. I am not a medical person. This is completely my experience and my experience only. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start getting a background down on this page. I've done a little bit of journaling. Basically, um, you know, uh, turning your thoughts. This is what I wrote here. You can't really tell, but I, I have an idea what I wrote. And it's basically turning your thoughts to good thoughts is very hard to do. And um, it's also good to do. Um, it's hard at times to get through whatever you're going through at the moment, whether it's pain or guilt or anger, uh, but you can get through it, okay? Um, not everyone um, that you have in your, your personal space, whether it be in your home, friends, family, that kind of thing, they're not all going to understand, but um, you need to understand what you're going through. Then you can educate them. Um, and this is, I have been here a lot of times, and I've done a lot of um, self-thinking after the accident. You know, you you know the questions. Why me? Is Was I supposed to learn something? You know, how come I didn't just take that one extra second to do whatever I needed to do so I didn't get hurt again? I mean, just all that kinds of stuff. But... You know, that's just, it's it's in the past, and you always have that, um, the saying, if you look in the past, you're not going to see your future. So I have chosen to look at my future because back there, it's not where I wanted to be. Here, I'm not where I want to be. I want to be a better person as far as physically um, that I am right now. But that's not possible due to the injury. The injury is there. The injury is going to stay. There's nothing I can do about it. I have um, went to many, many doctors, and I get the same answers. It's permanent. There's nothing you can do. So basically, suck it up, right? So um, what I got here is I've got some Deco Art Gesso. i got to use this up. I've got some Dina Wakely Rosie and Dina Wakely uh, Sand. These are both acrylic paints. So yeah, oh, if I can get them open. Let me see how this is. See if it's ill if it's able to be smooshed. Yeah, we can smoosh it. So, anyways, um, yeah, today's about the I can and I can't, and or I can't and I can. Let's put it that way. It's it's very difficult. Ouch! See my since my hands are dry, I can't open that stuff. Um, it's a very difficult place to be in whether it be, you know, in your world of I can or can't. Um, it's something that, it doesn't just go away overnight. It's something you have to work on every single day. Every, whoops, single minute. Um, it, it's just, it's not something you can just say, oh, great, I've dealt with guilt and I'm done. And eh, it doesn't work that way. So, talking about the I cans and I can'ts, um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what you can do and what you can't do. I'm just going to mention how I approach it when something that I really want to do or wanted to do is not in the wheelhouse of my eye cans, right? So there's so much more out there we all want to do. I know that. Um, I would love to do some major traveling. Um, that was actually in our plans for retirement is to do some really cool traveling um, moving we did end up moving um, unfortunately I wasn't able to you know do all the moving so my husband did 99% of it himself um, but you know it's one of the things that you just you got to deal with it um, so what I've got is I've got five different things here that we're going to talk about the cans and the can or the cans and then the cans Okay, and I'm going to somehow create this page to make them um, go on this page. All right, right now I'm just trying to put something down, covering up a little bit of that journal. It doesn't have to all get covered up, it's no big deal. It's me, it's who I am, I know it's there. 
So I wish I could ask you guys, um, you know, what your biggest hurdle is. Um, if you're interested, send me a private message and we'll see what, you know, if I can talk to you about how I felt during that hurdle. Um, I know some people, there. I can't say some people, many people, there's many people out there that are in a difficult situation more than I am. I understand that. I'm not, you know, a know-it-all. I don't, I don't know everything about this. I can just tell you what my experience has been, what has helped me, and maybe some of that knowledge of mine can help you. So that's where we're at on me doing these. I'm going to clamp this down and then I'm going to go ahead and dry it and we'll be right back. So I finished that up. Um, it's just a regular background. I'm like, you know, I want to add something to it. I have, um, first we're going to do the background, but I have these little mason jars that I've cut out of different things, different materials, whether it was papers that I liked or, you know, I stamped on or cardstock or whatever. So we're going to use these. I have a set for I can't and I have a set for I can. But I'm thinking this needs a little bit more before I do that. So I found this stencil. This is a, I believe, a Diane Reedley stencil. I've had it for years. Um, and all it is is all these little arrows going everywhere. And I thought, ho oh, ho, how perfect is that? Because, you know, what is this, this, this chronic pain issue? It's up and down and around and backwards and sideways and forward and it's just a roller coaster. So yeah, I just wanna, I wanted to put something light on so I've got this um, Luca uh, Amaretto Pastel. I'm sorry, Amarillo Pastel, boy, I can't talk today. Um, so I just wanted to put something different down there so that it wasn't just a live background. And I thought these were appropriate. So um, let's start talking about what we can and can't do. First thing I said, um, I put down, because I had to make myself notes so I can remember. The first thing I put down is you cannot keep beating yourself up. I can't stress that enough. It does you absolutely no good, none. Um, when you are negative towards yourself, uh, one of the things it does is it gives you more stress. It makes your energy level low. It um, it makes you grumpy. It makes you, oh, just see everything in a darker light, if I, you know, if I can explain it that way. It's, when you're beating yourself up, that's not a good thing. Would you do that to your best friend? If your best friend was having a bad day, and would you beat her up? Absolutely not. I wouldn't. Um, here we go. I don't know if you guys can see this. There's little arrows there. I'm going to dry this real quick. If I, my best friend came to me and said, oh, I'm worthless, I can't do anything, blah, 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 blah. What, do, what would you say to your best friend when they say that? What would you say to your best friend when they say, you say, um, you know, I can't do anything, there's no reason for me to be here, blah, 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 blah. You're not just going to ignore it right you're going to be you're going to give them uplifting thoughts and you're going to give them hey you know you are worthy there's people that love you there's people that um you know want to be with you want to spend time with you whatever it may be you're going to help that person along well you have to do the same thing to your body when in your mind when your mind is telling you oh you know um if this hadn't happened i would have been you know worth something i would have been able to do something all this kinds of stuff you got to stop beating yourself up. Um, trust me, it's easier said than done. I still do it. Uh, when I get to beating myself up, which matter of fact happened not long ago, um, I'd say probably a week ago if that, I, I have what I call a meltdown. Um, and my husband knows that he sees it coming. And just a little bit behind my story as to why I have uh, really bad hips. I have a lot of bursitis in my hips. And what happens is when I um, beat myself up and I get really just down in the dumps and, and not happy, I end up with a meltdown. Meaning I sit there and I cry. <laughs> and... You know, he, he sees it coming every time. I get injections like every three months. And if the, the injections um, 
wear off before the three months. There's nothing I can do except go get them again. And, um, come on, I can't talk and type right at the same time. Um, so anyways, I, I, you know, my shot, my injections have actually worn off for almost six weeks now. Uh, this set didn't last as long. I'm hoping it doesn't mean my body's getting used to them. So we'll see when I go back. I go back on Friday. Uh, so anyways, when you do that, I, I can tell you, um, I was not happy. I was, I don't want to say bored. I was up with set with myself. I didn't want to hear anything, anybody, anyone, nothing. Um, oh, let's see, this is can't. I should have put little things on there anyways. But you can't be yourself. But we're going to make these um, show up a little bit more on this page. So, anyways, I was having that breakdown. Um, the meltdown is what I call it. And, of course, my husband talks to me and he's like, you realize what's going on? I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm being mean to myself because my hips are hurting really bad. And when my hips hurt, it... it um, makes my back pain worse and then it just continues to travel up and down my body and it's just I'm in extreme pain and I it's horrible it's horrible that's the only way I can say it so instead of doing this instead of beating ourselves up um, what we can do is we can be gentle a couple things one Yes, I know what the issue is. All right, I'm using myself as an example. Yes, I know what the issue is. It's my hips and the injections have worn off. So what can I do instead of beat myself up about it? One, rest. Two, make sure I do some walking because if not, they completely seize up. Three, contact the doctor's office, see if there's any way possible I can get in a little bit quicker. As it was, I called and due to my insurance, I was able to get in three days quicker. So instead of week after, uh, oh no, not three days, um, a week. Um, I got in a week quicker because I would have had to wait until the following Friday to get them done. So they worked with me on that. Uh, my husband has absolutely no um, judgment against me as to whether I can do something or I can't. So, you know, he's all good with that. So I know that's not an issue. Um, what else can I do to be gentle with myself? I use a heating pad a lot. Um, and I have to remember that this is things that are happening to my body that I didn't choose this stuff. Trust me. If I did, um, yeah, I need my head examined. Um, but I didn't. So I didn't choose this stuff. So this stuff um, I just have to deal with and I just have to understand it's okay. So instead of beating myself up, what I can do is I can be gentle. I gotta get different pens in this because these don't write very dark, do they? What if I have another one that's decent? Let's see if this one works. That works better. I can be gentle. With myself. Um, talking about the cans, I know for a fact that um, that's the issue. There's nothing I can do about it except go get my, you know, my um, injections, which is what I need to do. That's already set up. So in the meantime, I have to be gentle with myself and I have to stop beating myself up and saying, well, geez, you know, this hurts so much. I, you know, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't. No, I can do something. I can do self-care. I can take care of my body. Right. All right. So be gentle with yourself. That's the first one. Uh, the second one. Um, this is one that I have a hard time, a big hard time with because I expect so much more out of myself and I'm very hard on myself, which I've been since, um, you know, I was born is 
you can't think of yourself as lazy. Now, if you hear the scratching, it's my dog trying to come in. She's actually out in the other part of the house. She wants to come in here. So every single time my injections wear out and I basically have to spend a few days couch time or bedtime or however my you know body feels better while I'm during this time, I always, in the back of my head, I hear myself saying, oh, you're just being lazy. You're just being lazy. You need to get off your butt and do something because you're just being lazy. Well, guess what? No, I'm not. I'm doing what my body tells me to do. So instead of telling myself I'm being lazy, I have to tell myself that it's okay. My body needs this time, right? So what you can do, I'm going to put white on this one. I'm going to have to write it right over my white. But what you can do, instead of thinking yourself as lazy, you can um, use self-care. And this isn't writing. What is it with my pens not writing today? Um, let me try this one, maybe. That's better. You can use self, and see it's not writing again. She's sitting out right outside the door waiting. Um, another thing you can do while you're using that self-care, you can Let's say you want to sort some papers, okay? You got a bunch of papers in your art room and you want to sort them out. Have your spouse, your your brother, sister, daughter, son, grandson, whatever, bring that stuff out to the couch and just take your time and um She's trying to get in. Uh take your time and take that downtime is a time to catch up on things if you're feeling like it. If you're not feeling good enough, then go ahead and catch up on your Netflix or catch up on your Hulu or Prime or whatever you decide to watch. Um, if you have a bunch of, t of shows uh, recorded, catch up on those. But don't let yourself think of being lazy. All right, I'll be right back. I gotta let her in. Hold on. Okay, so my little girl's in here. So if she barks or if you hear her toenails clicking, um, just so you know, she's here. All right, so that's number two. You can't think of yourself as lazy, and I did add on here, um, use self-care and catch-up time. See what, you know, what you can do. Maybe you like to knit or crochet. Um, crochet a little bit. Doesn't mean you have to make an entire afghan, but if you feel like crocheting, you know, for an hour, go for it. If you can do it in 15-minute increments, go for it. Um, but instead of looking down onto yourself and thinking that you're no good and that you're lazy and that you know you're 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 not being productive yes you are you're taking care of your body and that's number one right so that is number two number three is <laughs> this one's hard for me um what you cannot do and i'm gonna write this one here I wish my writing was better, but so I'm going to put can not. You cannot be sick and pretend everything is okay and carry on life the way you used to. Now I can hear everybody going, why? Why not? Why not? Because you're just beating yourself up. Your, your, whatever your medical situation is, you have to listen to your body. I can't stress that enough. I hear so many people, well, I get up and I do this and this and this. And I'm like, okay, how do you feel afterwards? Oh, I feel so horrible. I'm in so much pain. Why? Why? Yes, I understand things need to get done, but you need to find a different way to do them. So you cannot be sick. and pretend you are well. Let 
me just give you an example of that. Um, there's been days, I go up to my friend's house up in North Carolina, and I will, you know, we'll decide, you know, we want to get something to eat. Instead of going out, if I'm feeling really bad, instead of going out, I will say to my friend, is there any way possible we can just order in and, you know, just have a meal like that? And absolutely we do. You have to compromise at times with your own body um, because it's telling you one thing and you want to do another. Um, you have to have the art of compromise when it comes to being chronically ill. All right. So what I wrote on here is for number three, use self-care when you need to. So I'm, I did that here, use self-care, you're noticing a theme. Be gentle with yourself, use self-care. Um, let's say, um, comp I'm going to use this as compromise. You can, you can compromise. I'll go through when I'm doing something else on this sheet and I'll get these. Compromise. Huh, can't even see it. All right, I'll fix that. I'll do it with a label or something. So, yes, you can compromise what's going on with your body and um, make different plans or think of ways to do things differently. All right, if you're sick and you know you have to get to motor vehicle today and you have to get to your insurance company, okay, is there any way you can do your motor vehicle work online? Can you call your insurance company instead of going down there? If they're looking for a document, can you just email it to them, fax it to them, um, scan it and send it to them? You know, think of different ways that you can still be good to your body and still not have to put it through more abuse than it already is because you have things to do. Example, another example is dinner. I already talked about, you know, at a friend's house. Well, at home, if you know you're going to make dinner tonight, all right, so in the morning, you're going to put one of the dishes together. Let's say, I don't care what it is, um, corn casserole, whatever. You put that together in the morning. You bake it. While you're baking it, you're chilling out. Um, you know, relaxing, resting, whatever your body needs to do. Okay, that dish is done. Then you want to do your meat, your protein, or you want to do your veggies or whatever. Um, take it in steps. Yes, you have to warm it up at dinner time, but isn't that better than standing there trying to make dinner and being in so much pain you want to scream? I think it is. But again, this is my journey, and this is this is my opinion on what I have had to do to uh, make myself be able to live with this chronic pain. Okay. All right, number four. <laughs> you cannot. Do everything you used to. This is huge, huge. You can't do everything you used to be able to do. Your body is no longer in the same um, shape that it was in prior to your your chronic pain your body was your body is not as strong as it used to be in chronic pain these are things I'm feeling I'm figuring out um, my body tends to give out a lot quicker than um, I used to I used to be able to go shopping all day long and half the night I mean I had a blast when my girlfriends and I went shopping we just it was an all day and half a night or thing you know nice dinner afterwards and you know, oh, maybe you want to hit a shop or two on the way home. It doesn't matter. But you cannot do everything you used to. I'm to the point now if I go maybe one, maybe two stores, if I can get that second store, I'm done. I'm done for the day. I just can't. My body is not allowing me to go further. So you have to get this out of your mind. You are not who you used to be, and you can't control that for one. And you can't expect your body to be that way again. 
If you have chronic pain, chronic pain means the chronic means you're always going to have it. It does not go away. It doesn't ease off. It doesn't, um, it's not something you can cure. Chronic pain is with you for the rest of your life. Whether you like it or not, it's there and it's not going anywhere, right? So am I who I used to be? No, I've changed a lot. Um, it's been a very emotional roller coaster up and down due to all of this stuff. It's something that, you know, it takes time to figure out. But eventually, you know, you guys are going to get the hang of this. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not preaching. I'm not counseling. I'm just telling you my opinion with my journey. This is what I've had to figure out and to learn. Um, when I first got hurt, I didn't have anybody to talk to about this. Nobody to tell me that it was okay to feel guilty or to be angry or, you know, that I didn't have to continue to do everything that I used to do and then pay for it. There's no reason for that. All right, so you cannot do everything you used to, but what you can do is you need to let, let me put on here can do, or just can. Come on. You know what it is? These are co um, colored with these are just copies. This one is um, shaving cream. I cut it out of an index card that I did with shaving cream, and it doesn't like to be written on. Okay. What you can do is you can learn to accept. Let me just write it in black. Um, you can learn to accept. Um, who you are now. This isn't something that happens overnight. It's not something that's going to happen um, within, you know, the first six months. Um, this is an ongoing thing. This doesn't stop. I still find to this day that you know, I'll want to do all these things, and I'm not who I used to be. I have to say, okay, well, yeah, no, I can't do that. Yeah, I can go shopping, but I can only do one or two stores, and then that's it for the day. Maybe a good lunch, and we're home. Not a problem. Um, so you have to learn that, and it's difficult. It's difficult to learn and to accept it. I think that's the biggest part, is accepting who you are now. It's difficult. It's very difficult. It takes time. Again, you guys know I'm a big person when it comes to journaling. I promote journaling, especially for chronic pain, because there is so much in our head, in our hearts, in our bodies, that we just want to scream or yell or understand or um, just write down. I have found personally, if I write all this stuff down, it doesn't keep weighing on my mind. D does that mean it's gone? No. Absolutely not. But I don't think about it every second. If I write it down, write down my feelings and be truthful. Um, I'm good. I'm good. I, you know, it may take another three, four days, five, six, 12 months. I don't know. But I'm good at that moment to understand that, okay, this is something I can't change. So it's very difficult to learn, like I said, to accept yourself for who you are now, accept your abilities of what you can do now, accept your feelings of how you feel now, um, and just accept you. That's the only thing you can do. All right, number five. Uh, let's see. <laughs> This is talking about this pretty much same thing. So let me see if I can find something else. What else I had down for number five is you cannot continue to mourn who you were. Um, when I say mourn, it takes a long time to understand that you can't be who you wanted to be in the essence of living with chronic pain. So basically my fifth one I, you know, I said, you know, you can't continue to mourn who you used to be. That's in the past. 
Nothing in our past can be changed. Nothing. It's only this moment and forward is how you look. Um, just again, the example of traveling. We wanted to travel when we retired. When I should say when my husband retired and I retired from the company. Um, we both wanted to, you know, take our RV and just travel for months and do whatever we wanted to do and, you know, have a home base to come back to. Um, that just, it can't happen now. So why would I sit and continue to mourn that travel? It doesn't do me any good. What I have to understand for myself is, and I think I may just do that, I may do the mourn, is to realize that I'm still me, I'm still Cindy, but in a different physical way. Okay, so I still have the thoughts and dreams and all that stuff that I used to, um, but a lot of it I know is just not realistic at this point. It's just not, and, and I have to accept that. All right, so I'm going to say cannot. Um, if you are just new to chronic pain, and I say this right now, it's going to take you quite a while to get to the point where, um, you know, you, you just have to understand that you're you, you, you are still you, just in a different way. So you cannot, it, the morning um, for this will take a while. Um, it does take a while. And there's nothing really easy to help you get through it other than the understanding that just because you have chronic pain, that doesn't mean your life is over. The life that you, or maybe some of the dreams that you had and used to do or wanted, that might be over. But you're still a human being. You still have feelings. You still have dreams and thoughts. And, and you know, you need to eventually let go of that mourning so you can understand that you're just, you're you, just in a different way. So you cannot um, continue to mourn. Who you were. I'm going to say who you used to be. It's not going to do you any good. The only thing this is going to do is it's going to make you depressed. It's going to make you cry. It's going to make you angry. It's going to make you just upset. Really mad. Really disgusted. Um, it's going to make you feel completely worthless. It's going to make you feel like you have no purpose. It's going to make you feel like, you know, my whole being just got ripped away. All right, that's some of the feelings that you're going to go through when you do mourn who you used to be. Um, once you get to the point where you understand that you're still you, just in a different way, then a bunch of those feelings will, I'm not going to say go away, because they never ever really go away, but they're not at the forefront. They will... Um, sit back until you have really rough times and then that's going to come back a little bit. But all of these, like I talked about, um, it doesn't matter where you are in this journey. These are just ways that I've learned. I do kind of like a pros and cons. I can or I can't. Or I can or I can and I can't. Um, I, If you noticed, I didn't talk about anything physical in here because I truly believe that to stand in front of a person and say I can't do anything is a lie. Um, you breathe, you open your eyes, you brush your teeth, hopefully you take showers. You, you are still human. You talk. You, um, you still love. You still, you know, take care of yourself the best the way you can. You take care of your family the best way you can. It's not that you can't do anything. If you could not do anything, you would be a complete invalid, in my opinion. You would be an invalid in bed that needed 100% 24-7 self-care. Or not self-care, self-help. Somebody to help you. Right? So, I don't ever say I can't do anything. There's things that I will say that I used to do but my body will not let me do now. 
Um, just an example is motorcycle riding. Um, my husband and I love to ride motorcycle. I had mine. Um, the one I loved was my Kawasaki uh, Vulcan 900. It was a beautiful bike. I love to be on the road, just me and him, and the smell of nature, <laughs> some good, some bad. Um, but it was very, very freeing. And that was huge. It was a huge part of our lives prior to my accident. As of now, we finally both sold our bikes and it's gone and it's not something we'll do again. But instead of saying I can't do it, you know, oh geez, I can't wear it most again. You're right, I can't because my legs will not hold me up. And that's not my fault. That's the result of the injury. So again, it cycles right back. Don't beat yourself up over it. Okay, you need to be gentle with yourself. All right, I can't ride motorcycle anymore. But that doesn't stop me from going outside and sitting down in the yard and listening to the birds or, or you know, watching um, butterflies on the flowers. Or I still can get that nature. I don't get it quite in the same way. Um, when you're riding in a car versus riding on a motorcycle, it's totally different. But you can go for a ride in your car with your windows down and the beautiful air breathing in, breathing in and getting the, you know, the sense of the flowers and the trees or whatever you happen to go by. Um, so to say I can't for me is, is something that I really don't like to say because I feel there are things I can do in place of what I used to do, right? So maybe you can't make a five course meal in an hour but you know what? You can do a course every hour and a half throughout the day, giving yourself space in there to rest, and you can have your meal at the end of the day, right? Okay, let's say you can't have um, you can't have your five course. You can do three. Maybe you can only do two. Maybe you can only do a casserole. You still can do something. It's not that you can't. So I'm gonna back to this one. I'm gonna cannot mourn. You cannot mourn who you used to be. And something you can do oops, is realize um, you are you just in a different way. right this is how I have to look at it now because if I don't I could sit here um, I actually have uh, manic depression so I could actually sit here and just be completely miserable but instead of doing that this is what I want to do I don't want to do this anymore okay this is not healthy for me this doesn't help me physically, mentally. Um, it doesn't help me live a good life. This does. So I think it's something that you, um, when you're thinking about your chronic illness and you're going through your everyday emotions and everything, think back at it and try to look at it just a little bit differently. All right. Um, try to think, well, geez, I can't do that. Instead of saying I can't do that, let's try... Hmm. I wonder how I can figure out so I can still do this. Maybe not the way I used to. It'll be totally different. For example, the meal. Um, but maybe I can, you know, I can do this. I can just do it differently. And I think that's my whole point on I can and I cannot is yes, you can just differently. Now what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> losing my voice, I'm going to go ahead and Put some music on, and I want to finish this page. There's things I want to do to it to make it look cohesive and decent. And, you know, just take your time and think about the things that we talked about. And hopefully, um, you know, your day will be a little bit brighter, and you can start looking at things a little bit different. And that's really what needs to be done um, while you're thinking about those feelings and feeling those feelings and again get out a journal it doesn't have to be fancy just a notebook and just start writing don't worry about grammar don't worry about sentences just 
right. Everything you feel. Then if you don't want anybody to see it, take it and tear it up in little tiny pieces and throw it in the garbage. Or, you know, take it out and put it in your burn barrel or, you know, hide the notebook. It, it's totally up to you. But I fully believe if you sit and write a lot of that stuff down, it may not go away the first time. You may have to write it more than once or twice or three times. But eventually, you're going to let go of a lot of those emotions. And I'm not saying they're going to be gone forever. They will come back at times, but nowhere near as strong as they are right now. All right, let me throw on some music, and we'll chat at the end. Enjoy. All right, everyone. So what I did, <coughs> pardon me, is I wrote on here, first of all, my card. And it says, um, this is a journey that I have been on since 2012. There are many ups and downs, and I learn more every day. What I learn is I can. So that is what I do learn. When I end up with a battle of something, I end up with, you know, I can do this. I just have to figure out how. And that's not going to work. So I've got all of my little can and cans here on sticker. Um, that's done with a Xyron. I'm pretty sure you guys have all seen it, but if you haven't, here it is. Um, it's a little one inch Xyron sticker maker, sticker machine maker. And you just put stuff in the top and pull this little piece of paper here, stick it in here, pull this piece of paper, and it comes out. And it's really cool. And I enjoy using it, so. This one is not sticker. I didn't want to bring out my big, bigger Xyron machine, so this one's just got some Sukwang double-sided tape on it. So I'm actually going to put this right here. Oh, I also, um, if you noticed, I went through with a pink pen. I just wanted something different. Um, so I went through with this pink gel print pen and just decided to do some of the arrows. I didn't do them all. I just did a few. And I just outlined them. That's all I did. So nothing exciting or crazy there. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to start with our cants. Um, here's number one. I don't have to cut them apart, but I am just for convenience, for the sake of easiness. Um, when you get them on the sticker, you just pull off this front paper right here. And here you go. You have yourself a sticker. So I'm going to do number one is you can't beat yourself up. We're going to put that there. Oh, maybe I do it. We'll do it this way. Number two. Actually, let's do this. Let's take them all off. Let's do number two. Number three. Number four. If you have some on paper, this is kind of like on a painted paper, just be really careful when you pull them off. Um, before I pull any of them off, I take and just rub them down like that, and I do that when they're in a full strip. But just be careful because some of the tape will come off of the paper, and it won't have as big of a stick, you know, a stickiness. So I'll put that there. Everything's down like I need it to be. And that one's cardstock. Actually, it's cardboard, I think. All right, so here's the five can't. You cannot. Or you should not, I should say. It's not that you can't. You probably do, but you should not, um, you know, continue to do these things. So what I do is when these are on here, I just run through them just to make sure they're self-sticky. Um, just give them a little bit of pressure and make sure all the sticky is down. And I'll do the same thing with this one. I'll take all the stuff off it. Come on. Come on, come on. There we go. And I just get rid of this stuff. Alright, so let's start with number five. Oh no, that's number one. Darn it. Stick it back on. I'm going to start with number five. Because I kind of want them kind of in the positions. Four. I want to keep that happy. I want to make sure that we can read that. I don't know why I numbered these. I guess just to keep them straight in my head. So 
open that. Oops. That's compromise. And then this one. We can use self care and use it as catch up time. That's when you need to rest. <gasps> yeah, there you go. Don't fall apart. And number one. All right, now what I may do, um, I actually went around these with a um, Sharpie, my big king Sharpie. Here it is. Um, I went around all these outsides and I may do something more to them. I'm not really sure. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just leave it as is. So let's leave it as is. And this is for this month of March. <coughs> Pardon me. And it's I can. So, um, you know, I will. I, uh, I lost my train of thought there. Um, I really hope that when you guys are looking at yourselves and you're looking at um, things that you want to do or you're used to do, that don't beat yourself up and think about other ways that you can do th things. Instead of automatically thinking, I can't, let's say, hmm, how can I do that? Instead of, oh, I can't do that. All right. A lot of it's about changing the way you think. And as you go through your chronic pain journey, you're going to find that more and more that you have to change the way you think. If not, you're going to be miserable. All right. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the in down below. And um, again, you know, you can always talk to me. Just send me a private message or start a chat in our chronic pain group. And let's see what's going on, all right? If you are in this situation, you are in chronic pain, and you need to um, have a group that is friendly, that we don't judge. Um, I do have a group called Art Play Through, T-H-R-U, chronic, chronic Pain. So if you'd like to join up there, just, you know, ask to join. All right, guys, have a great day. Have a great night. Have a great morning, whatever it happens to be. And I will chat with you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.